You know, I think the nation at large is underestimating Mizzou football, but what is the national perspective? Let's find out from our recruiting expert coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and unfortunately, a guy who somehow did not connect this microphone for the next for the next interview I just did. So fortunately, my Mac did pick up with that internal microphone. But yes, the microphone I'm talking into right now was deemed a $400 desk ornament for the duration of this interview. So apologies for that. But you know what? Coming up here, going to talk about worries about Missouri's defense, the national perspective on the Tigers, and if Brady Cook is a draftable prospect in 2025. These are topics I've covered on the show, but I wanted to hear from somebody else who isn't buried in Mizzou stuff like I am. Let's hear the bigger perspective. And here it is with our buddy, Brian Smith. All right, joining me once again, it is Brian Smith, the Chief Executive Officer <laughs> of High School Recruiting here at the Locked On Podcast Network. He's my friend and yours, but you know what? Before we talk to Brian, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And, you know, Brian Smith, for my money, is good, if not the best, high school recruiting analyst out there, folks, without a doubt. But the guy knows just football in general, so I thought it'd be fun to just pick his brain a little bit about Mizzou in general here at the top. Of course, our, our big sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook, has the Tigers' win total right now at 9.5, though I will say the action looks like it's on the under right now, Brian. Do you think the nation at large is maybe underestimating the Tigers? Two reasons that the answer to that is yes. Number one, Missouri is not a per perennial power. And number two, they're in the SEC. People get kind of concerned about those words put together. That Those three letters, Southeastern Conference, it's hard schedule. But here are the reasons they can win 10 or more games. Cook is a fifth-year senior quarterback, third-year starter. You have Drinkwitz with his system completely in place. You've got something you and I were talking about before we started rolling – Cooper is their quote unquote, based on stats at least, their third wide receiver. Right. Knowed him for when he was in high school. This is a kid that they couldn't guard even then. If he is your third option, you can score quickly, even if you get behind in a game. And last year, final point here, let's just be honest. They found a way to run the ball, even though they had great receivers. They were really balanced. They were pain in the butt. Eli's system is really good. They're going to be right at nine wins, I think, minimum, just because they're so well coached and they have elite talent that's experienced, kind of meshing together. I don't think any defensive coordinator is looking forward to playing the Tigers. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And it seemed like it all kind of came together for the Tigers last year, especially with Kirby Moore coming on board. I, I'm with you. The Missouri offense last year was yeah. difficult for just about anybody to defend. You've got, of course, the outside zone. You got the jet sweep going the other way. And then to me, they added a lot more of the play action pass element last year, which helped Brady Cook out tremendously, in my opinion. So you're mentioning, yeah, Mookie Cooper. If here's your third guy, burden your one, Theo. Weiss, also an excellent two. You got, to me, Marquise Johnson's. He had a breakout his true freshman season. He averaged 25 yards a catch or something like that. I think he's going to be even better this year. So I'm not asking you for an actual ranking here, Brian, but do you, do, do you think this is one of the elite groups in the country, especially with all the LSU guys, for instance, off to the NFL? Well, I, I look at it from two perspectives. Number one, they were good last year. They're returning. And who has more coming back? Like, Johnson, you were mentioned, averaged 29 and a half yards catch. Like, that is insane. He just finds a way to get behind the defense. And when you have Luther out there, who's going to get most of the double teams, everybody else is one-on-one. -on -one. 
the receiving coach and all the offensive scheme together. Yeah, I, I think it's probably top five. And it starts with Luther because you can know that Cook wants to throw him the ball and he just takes it away from a guy. He's got given talent is, is a little different. But at the same time, they can throw it to other guys. When Again, 29 and a half yards of catch for Johnson. And now he's been through a spring practice and another offseason, et cetera. He's going to be bigger, stronger, faster. He's your fourth guy. Life is pretty good when they go four wide and they just want to throw it, or if they just go four wide and they want to run draws and teams are scared they're going to throw, they're going to complement each other. So it's not just the yardage they get in catching the ball, it's opening up the running game too. And that's why last year Missouri ran the ball so well, teams were worried they're going to beat them over the top. It your receiving course impacts the entirety of your offense. Yeah, and Marquise Johnson, as you mentioned, that those eye-popping yards per catch numbers, he was basically just a run down the field and go get it kind of guy last year, which he was really good at. But we did see in the spring game already, he's already starting to run drag routes. And, and just you can tell his route tree is starting to open up. So that's, that's a really good sign. Now, I guess if you're going to take uh, the bearish side of this equation for Missouri, I guess you'd look at the defense, right? Because Missouri's offense has just about all of its production back. But defensively, you can immediately go, all right, Missouri lost its defensive coordinator, Blake Baker, to LSU. They're two starting corners, Rake Straw, Chris Abrams Drain, also Darius Robinson, a possible first round pick up front, their best linebacker, Tyron Hopper. They're, they got some good guys in the portal, but are you worried about Missouri's defense at all? If it was only based on what was going to be there this fall from today, yes. There's another portal window on the 16th of April that opens up. If you could add one or two pieces, and maybe they get more. I, the portal is so wild. Sure. You know what? Uh, it could be fine. I have no idea. And I'm going to guess Eli doesn't know either because you can only offer the kids. You can't make them a sign. So, They'll get somebody to help. I, I think they need another pass rusher, and you could never have enough corners. No doubt. I mean, it's just, you know, that those are the same things that every team's looking for, though. That's why it's right. like, eh, I don't know. Is the defense going to be as good as last year? Losing both corners, a, a guy up front, Hopper, that's going to be hard. But stranger things have happened. And to that point, here's the other part. Because the offense is so darn good, in my opinion, there'll be a, an elite offense this next year. There's a chance that teams going into the game, now they're not going to talk about this publicly at their press conferences before they play the Tigers, but they know they got to score. Right. They're going to take more chances. They're going to throw the ball more. If they can find pass, that's why I bring up pass rushers first. They're going to have the lead a lot in first halves. When you play from a lead, it's easier to play defense. No so doubt. I, they need to score and score early to give their defensive linemen more rest and give them an opportunity just to pin their ears back. So there's a little bit of a resolution there as well. But to get one or more players in the portal would certainly help. No doubt about that. And, you know, speaking of the future, of course, we're talking about this Missouri offense. We've hardly brought up Brady Cook so far. And I'm just curious, you know, he's got obviously a guy who's at the moment for sure is flying way under NFL draft the NFL draft radar. But as you mentioned, one thing we've figured out over the years is if you're going to be a good NFL quarterback, more often than not, you're going to need a good amount of experience in college. Well, certainly Cook is going to have that. What do you think Brady, do you think Brady has a chance to be a draftable prospect after this year? And if so, what do you think he's got to work on in order to get there? What, do you, what does he have to show? Well, I think the arm strength is the one thing that everybody wants to see. Um, he's a lay it out there and let him go get it guy, and he's very accurate. He's timely. The more arm strength that you have, especially when they do these individual workouts, they'll, they'll try to figure out his velocity, uh, how well he can throw the seam ball, like that spot between the linebacker drop and the safety. There's That's a small window, brother, at the college level. At the NFL level, it, it's really, really difficult, but – it's not as easy to throw to the outside at the pro level because those corners are good. So you got to use more of the field. If he can show that when he gets to draft time, I think he can go fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round. Eight. Quarterback is random because there's so much perception. One guy loves no a kid. Doubt. Another guy hates him. I have O-line and quarterback. I get the most wide variety of opinions. And if you go look at like on three, if you pull out a, a player's prospect profile, it'll show the rankings for all four of the major networks, rivals, ESPN and 247 as well. You'll have a kid that's number 80 in the country by one and a low three star in another at O-line and quarterback. And like those two spots all the time. It's hard. So 
Cook needs to have a good year, but he needs to show that he can hit those whole shots where it's arm strength. Because I think mentally, like Eli's offense took him a while to learn, which is typical, but he's a smart guy. So I think he could at least be somebody that holds a clipboard in the NFL, which making money for standing there watching NFL football is a pretty good gig. Yeah. If he gets if he got drafted, it would not surprise me. I just want to see more arm strength and basically being able to hit those shots down the field that are more on a line. Because I know he can like throwing it up to Luther is probably fun, but that's a little bit easier. He needs to hit a few more hole shots. That's the only question I have. And coming up, of course, I do want to talk a little high school football with Brian as well, especially about Javen Boggs, the Ohio State decommit, very much on Missouri's radar. Let's hear what Brian has to say about that young man coming up here in just a second. But first, is your bracket already busted? Are you tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make the roster, cross your fingers, and frankly spend a ton of time just hoping for the best? Well, let's talk about Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent, and you can play with friends and not against them. Pick more or less on a real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. And really one of my favorite things about this is that if you're not a huge daily fantasy grinder, but maybe you have a friend who is, well, hop on board with them and you guys can make a little bit of dough together. At the very least, have some fun together. It's because that daily fantasy grind can be a little bit lonely. To me, it's a thousand times more fun with something like Better Together. So download Better Together now from the App Store and sign in using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. And of course, the Amazon Fire TV is best with Amazon Prime, but I think a lot of people get confused. You don't have to have Amazon Prime to have a Fire TV. And the beauty of the Fire TV is it's really your spot for just about anything you could want entertainment-wise. We're talking sports, movies, television, as well as free live TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. We're talking Major League Baseball, NBA, March Madness, not to mention, again, news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Well, speaking of receivers, since we're still on that topic a little bit, do want to talk a little high school football with you here. Javen Boggs, a receiver who had been committed to Ohio State, of course, Missouri's opponent in the Cotton Bowl this past season. Well, he just decommitted a recent Missouri visitor as well. Seems like the Tigers have a decent shot here, but also Georgia poking around. He's from Cocoa, Florida. You're stomping grounds, Brian. What do you know about this young man? I know him a little bit from meeting him at the Under Armour camp this year. Uh, he is a freaky, freaky athlete. Got big hands. He made a one-handed catch at the Under Armour event that was the talk of the camp. He's a guy that makes the special play. He's got size. He's over six foot tall. Um, he's really strong. And he's a kid that takes his craft seriously. Like when they played at St. Thomas Aquinas, which is one of the top five programs in the country probably, he was the reason they were in the game they ended up throwing for 498. He was the guy that nobody could cover. All four of the DBs for STA signed D1. He smoked them. So if you can go down to their house and have a huge game, that tells you something. And he was killing the DBs, South Florida DBs, in the Under Armour event, too. He's a great player. I think he had 15, 1,600 yards of receiving last year, and Coco's schedule was ridiculous. They yeah. fear nobody. They, they take on all comers. So, yeah, he's an impact kid. I don't think he's quite as talented as Luther out of high school. Like Luther, you could have made the argument was number one player in the country at ESPN had him there. Right. I think 
he's somewhere in the top 50 or so because he does all the little things and he has the frame to be an impact guy. Is he ready to be top 50 is, is debatable by some people, but just from knowing him like off the field, personality, work ethic, he's what college coaches want. Notre Dame wants him, like Ohio State wanted him, Georgia. You can kind of get the picture. And Missouri's going to lose Luther and some other guys. I think he could come in and play. I'm sure that's attractive to him as well. Yeah, sure. And yeah, to your point about how once you get past the truly, truly elite guys, even at receiver, you get a lot of a lot of differences here. He's 73rd in the country at, at rivals, 185 at 24-7. That's, right. that's, that's a pretty big gap there overall. Exactly. But, you know, I'll, I'll take your evaluation, number one. But yeah, just the idea that Georgia is after him. I always look at, you have committable offers to those kind of programs. Obviously, he was committed to Ohio State. Kind of all you need to know. Ohio State's put out just a plethora of wide receivers here recently. But you know what? Hopefully Missouri will put out a plethora of NFL players into the draft this season. And if that keeps happening, obviously you got to credit Eli Drinkwitz and his recruiting. I've noticed a lot of like Oklahoma fans, for instance. Missouri's gotten a couple over on Oklahoma recently on the recruiting trail. And I see their fans saying, well, it's all just because of NIL. And I think Missouri's got strong NIL, don't get me wrong, but it sure seemed like Missouri definitely stepped up its recruiting game even before NIL, like the 2021 class that was top 20, for example. What do you think it is about Eli Drinkwitz and his program that is attractive to high school guys? I mean, obviously Missouri's winning now. I'm talking more about even before this breakout season. They had a plan and they executed it. That's about as old and true as it gets, but... They recruited to their schemes, and they finally started keeping at least a few. They need to do better, but they're keeping a few of the elite players in the state. I mean, would would Missouri be where they are without Luther? No. I mean, he nobody can guard him. Like, my mom can throw passes to him. He's really, <laughs> really good. You know what I mean? And, like, while I'm being a little facetious, it's, it's just sometimes it's about the dude. Kirby said it recently, one of his press conferences, nine out of ten times, talent will trump coaching. And he's a really damn good coach. So for mm -hmm. him to say it yeah. puts things in perspective. So you got to execute your plan. You try to keep your kids at home, get the elite kids. You know, it's it's not not rocket science. Where I think it's interesting, like the Oklahoma fans, bitch, Oklahoma's NIL is humongous, by the way. So right. I don't want to hear any crap out of them. <laughs> Thank you. But like, and I, I don't care one way or the other about the school, but it's just, come on. The point is still the same. These guys are building relationships. I say it on your show all the time. Kids pick schools based on relationships. Oregon's got a huge NIL program. They got a kid to flip the kid from St. Louis. Forget his name. The receiver signs with Oregon. He told me that he disliked Oregon staff and everything they did better than Ohio State's. He said Oregon's NIL package wasn't as big as Ohio State's for it. So he picked relationships. So Missouri's coaching staff is also get, not getting enough credit. And again, it goes back to the thing we, we opened the show with, though. John, It's Missouri is not considered a perennial big time program. And now they've kind of entered into that at least short term. I mean, they got to be in that consideration. You know what? Kids are, they're kind of short-sighted. They're looking at the last five years. Missouri's relevant. They're going to be, I think they're a borderline top 10 team. I know you think the same. Recruits are going to look at that. Javon Boggs five years ago would not have looked at Missouri. Right. He would not have. True. But you look at what the hell they're doing now. Okay. The offense works. They're getting guys into the NFL and they're getting five-star guys. I'll at least give them a look. And once you get a kid on campus and you meet the kid that you've already built a relationship with through Twitter and everything else, you have a shot. So the last piece, it's in the SEC. You know, this is a chance, like, I, if you want to help build something, get them over the top. Missouri is the perfect program because they're on that cusp. So there's all kinds of ways you can sell the Missouri program. Yeah, that's a great point. I love all those points, and I think it shows why 2024 is just such a huge year for Drinkwitz and the whole yeah. Missouri program. If you can follow up 23 with a similar, if not even better, 2024, my goodness. I mean, just like a playoff appearance, for example. I mean, suddenly then the perception really does change, Brian, because like you say, if you're 16 years old and you're looking around at what school you want to go to, you don't remember much before you're 10. So, you know, at least at least that's how I was when I was a teenager. So, Brian, hey, thank you so much for joining me. As always, you can find him at fbscout underscore Florida on x.com. Brian, thanks as always. 
Appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. All right. I think we got through that subpar audio experience together. Again, my apologies. I'm not even really sure what happened there. But you know what? Coming up on the program, I'm going to finish it off with some high-quality audio and a solo rant about why I think that the people who think that football is getting too soft with the recent rule changes, the the hip swivel drop tackle being banned, for instance, and of course the new kickoff rules as well. I think this is an overreaction. I really don't need football to be as brutal as it possibly can to enjoy it. I want to explain exactly what I'm talking about here. Coming up in just a little bit. First, though, I do want to tell you about Nissan. And the NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised everyone, except me, with a powerful performance in their first two games of the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life, go Rogue. Well, that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 100 and 22 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. So here's my thing with football. I don't need American tackle football to be the most brutal version of it that it can possibly be, or the most physically dangerous version of it that it can possibly be for it to be enjoyable. Now, having said that, of course, it can't become sarcasta ball like we saw in South Park a few seasons ago. It can't literally become two-hand touch or flag football because physicality is is obviously a huge part of the game. So again, I don't need football to be as dangerous as humanly possible. What I do need, though, is blocking and tackling the simple physical elements of the game that we all love. And to this new kickoff rule in the NFL, I've talked quite a bit about it in the last few episodes, mainly about how I think it helps Harrison Mevis's NFL prospects But one thing, again, if you haven't seen an example of this, you can see them on my X feed, number one, x.com slash locked on Mizzou, but various other places in your old Google machine. Just plug it in and look for the XFL actual live versions of this kickoff. It'll give you a much better idea of what we're seeing. And indeed, compared to the old kickoff style, it does look very odd and different at first. But what it really looks like, honestly, is the similar start of a regular snap in football. If it's first and 10, this new kickoff where both teams basically line up a few yards apart and have to remain frozen staring at each other until the snap, or in this case, the ball hitting the ground and being picked up by the return man, that really is just basically how most snaps on offense and defense, of course, begin. Now, football in in kickoffs, traditionally, you have dudes with a 50 to 60 yard, 70 yard start running full speed ahead, trying to mash the other guys who are running full speed ahead going the other way. So, yes, that can be an exciting play, no doubt about that, and creates some incredible collisions, the type that Homer Simpson 
would have loved when he rented football's greatest injuries back in the day. But for me, I'm not the type of person that gets upset when he gets distracted and misses the Joe Theismann leg snap. I'm just not into that kind of stuff. Again, I like manliness and masculinity and guys ramming into each other and trying to get the extra yard for their team and all that kind of stuff. I really don't need to see a guy's leg snap in half, though. If we can avoid that, I'm all for it. And the reason I say that is because that's kind of what this new drop, the the sort of hip swivel drop tackle, boy, is that a needlessly elaborate name, but basically what's being tried to take out of the game here is grabbing a guy from behind and then basically dropping your weight or your hips to the ground and then landing on the back of his legs. We've seen the most brutal example of this play that I've seen is when Kenyon Drake, who was with, I believe, the Arizona Cardinals at the time. I I can't remember. Doesn't matter. The point is, somebody did this to him, fell on the back of his leg, and his ankle just literally like snapped like a twig. It's it's hard to watch. Don't Don't turn it up on the internet. So my thing is, I understand the people who are worried about this particular tackle, though, because, well, I think most of us aren't into seeing guys' legs snap, actually trusting NFL referees to properly call and implement this new rule, well, that's another thing. And I do agree that the more types of restrictions you put in here, at a certain point as a defender, you have to wonder, what, what do I have to do here? That's a general thought here that I think is a fair one. But to me, I don't know that there is so many instances of this particular type of tackle that it's going to be a big problem. Again, if you grab the guy from behind and just sling him to the ground or something, you're fine. As long as you don't just fall down the back of his legs, it's going to be okay. I I understand people's hesitation here, but to me, I, I like this rule change. I at least like the spirit of the rule here. I don't think it's like changing football entirely or anything like that. But I do see the argument with the drop swivel tackle, especially in terms of of safety and, oh, the game's getting too soft. I just don't see that with this new kickoff rule. If you think there's a more exciting way to implement a new kickoff style, I'm all for it. I'm all ears. But saying that it's too soft, well, then I guess first through third down, and I guess that's too soft too because that's this new kickoff rule that's basically – how the lion's share of your snaps in football begin with the offense and defense staring at each other. And then suddenly, okay, here we go. The play started. Well, that's how this is going to go. I don't think that's really that radical of a change. And actually to me, that's very much within the spirit of football. And now 90% of the time, apparently we're going to get actual running and blocking and tackling and all that stuff. And maybe the occasional reverse lateral, too, that we've seen in the XFL. Hey, I'm all about that kind of stuff. Let's get creative with the kickoffs. A lot more interesting than the punt, pass, and kick part of the contest where we just boot the ball through the end zone every single time, as we saw in the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Was there one kickoff returned in the Super Bowl this past season up in that thin air? Sure didn't seem like it. So to me, this is a positive change, but certainly reasonable people can disagree with me on that. But hey, regardless, thanks as always for checking me out here on Locked on Mizzou. Apologies for not having a show on Wednesday. I'll be honest, I just just needed a me day. I needed a little bit of time off, and quite honestly, I felt like maybe the audience needed a day off from my voice as well. So I'm going to keep trying to get some more guests in here on the offseason. Thanks for being patient. And again, thanks as always for listening to Locked on Mizzou.